and hitting his home stretch. After the assassination, Curtis says he followed and in, an intimidated struck. Well, he was after the assassination. Curtis said he was followed and intimidated by Strasser. Pepper writes. Lenny said he subsequently became aware that, a, that strange things were happening around him. His gas was strangely turned on once when he was about to enter to his house. He had lit a cigarette, but as he opened the door, he smelled gas and quickly put out the cigarette. A strange Lincoln was occasionally parked across the street from his apartment. He was very frightened. One morning when the car was there, he got into his own car and quickly drove off. And the strange car pulled out and followed him. He managed to see the driver. Yes, it was Strasser. In the book, Pepper describes how he came to meet with Strasser, who described, he describes as a committed and devout racist. He had no respect for black people at all, Pepper says. He wasn't explicit about his racism, but he was not at all. He wasn't explicit about his racism, but he was not at all sympathetic to what Martin King was all about. In the hope of prompting an admission, Pepper lied and told him that he had been implicated in the killing of by Lloyd Jowers, but Strasser didn't take the bait. Pepper also told Strasser that the footprints found in the bushes after the shooting were from a size 13 shoes, which they were, and then asked him about the size of his feet. He had a bit of grin on his face and he said, 13 large? Pepper also arranged to have a cab drive Nathan Whitlock, who Strasser knew, tell him that there was a good possibility that he meaning Strasser, would be indicated for the shooting. He responded, What are they going to indict me for? Something I did 30 years ago? And then he caught himself and added, Or something I knew about 30 years ago? Hmm. Okay. Same thing with John Kennedy. Let me finish this story up. A threat to the powers that be. As Pepper explains, King was not only hated by the establishment as he rose to prominent in the 60s, he was feared. Not only did he have the ability to move large numbers of people with his message of peace and tolerance, but he had designs on a political career, according to Pepper. King was planning to run for president on a third-party ticket with fellow anti-war activist Dr. Benjamin Spock. He was also causing panic in powerful circles because he intended to bring hundreds of thousands of poor people to the encampment in Washington, D.C. in the spring of 1968 to bring attention to the plight of the poor. They were terrified that the anger level when the demonstrators were not going to get what they wanted was going to rise to such a point where Martin was going to lose control of that group and that the more radical of them would take it over and they'd have a revolution, Pepper explains. They didn't have the troops to put it down. That was a real fear that the army had. And I think it was probably a justifiable fear. King uh, would also have posed an increasing threat to the political establishment because he intended to become much more vocal in his opposition to the Vietnam War. He had been influenced by an article and photographs by Pepper called The Children of Vietnam, which was published in Ramparts magazine in January of 1967 and later reprinted in a Look magazine. My um, ex-sister-in-law father used to shoot for Look magazine. Anyway. The man who publishes the piece in Look, Bill Outwood, actually told Pepper he received a visit from a former New York governor and ambassador to the Soviet Union named Avril Harriman, who passed on the message from President Johnson that he would appreciate it if Offwood never pushed, published anything by Pepper. Really? Beyond King's importance as a powerful force for justice, peace, and equality, 
he was also pepper spray. And the lawyer journalist had to deal with that loss as he sought the truth about who really killed King, his friend, and fought for justice for the man falsely accused of his murder. He writes, For me, this is a story rife with sadness, replete, and with massive accounts of personal and public deception and betrayal. Its revelations and experiences have produced in the writer a depression stemming from an unavoidable confrontation with the depths to which human beings, even those subject to professional codes of ethics, have fallen. In addition, there is an element of personal despair that has resulted from this long, hard-fought effort, which has made me even question the wisdom of undertaking this task. But he did undertake it, and we should all be grateful that he did. And again, the name of the book is The Plot to Kill King. Um, I would suggest all of y'all get it. And you're going to find a lot of similarities between this and who killed the president of my youth, John F. Kennedy. And, and both of these murders so helped shape and influence the way I see the world today and to know and to see the cover up of this nation that is still using these clandestine tactics today and we still cannot understand that it's so much bigger than male female gender wars and, um, who is wants to be a racist and who doesn't we have a government that is hell bent on kill killing the truth and that's no matter who brings it whether they're white or whether they're black and the objective is to stop us from uniting in 1691 they divided a plan where they would call some of y'all white and some of us niggers now because before then there was a relationship that we worked along side by side with one another and we knew who the enemy was it was the rich, the elitist, the 1%. But not anymore. Not anymore. Some of us have drank the Kool-Aid. And after hundreds and hundreds of years of conditioning, some of y'all minds are just freaking fucked. Oops. Well, that's about the size of it. But that's the end of that conspiracy, and I thought I'd do that because it's very important that I get that down, and and, and it's really important that y'all really know that this man was not just, I, I have a dream, <laughs> and it's sickening that he, my brother has been relegated to, I have a dream speech, because he, 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 he was woke, and he was way more than a dream. The last thing he was talking about was going to Washington, D.C. and getting our check because he knew how this country had given land grants to all kinds of Europeans coming over here. Even though black people had worked and were promised 40 acres and a mule and got nothing. So he organized the poor people, black and white. And you see the result. But I believe that time is on the move again. And I believe that there's a great phenomenon moving, moving in the air. It's almost like I can hear Phil Collins. And I've been waiting for this moment all my life, oh Lord. Mm. And can't you feel it coming in the edge of night? Yeah, I'm telling you, I feel it. But like a great idea whose time has come, it is time. It's time for y'all to deal with the truth and figure out how, how we're going to go from here. All right, family. With that being said, if you like what you hear, please, 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 please subscribe. And share. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.